Welcome, dear friends, to A Poignant Tale, where a single split-second decision becomes the catalyst for discovering that life's greatest treasures often lie in the places we once left behind. Enjoy the story. Patrick Morgan's life changed on an ordinary Tuesday evening, though he didn't know it yet. The September sun was setting over Cedar Park Apartments, casting long shadows across the parking lot as he turned his SUV into the familiar entrance. He'd made this drive hundreds of times over the past five years, usually thinking about business projections or upcoming contracts. Today, his mind was on the argument he'd had with Vanessa that morning. You're too cautious, she'd said over breakfast, perfectly manicured nails tapping against her coffee cup. We could double the business if you'd just take some risks. Eleven years of marriage, and still she didn't understand that his careful approach was what had built their window installation company into a successful enterprise. But that was Vanessa, always pushing, always wanting more. The sight of her silver BMW blocking the narrow drive pulled him from his thoughts. She was gesturing animatedly through the windshield, phone pressed to her ear, completely oblivious to the cars trying to maneuver around her. Classic Vanessa, living in her own world where only her priorities mattered. Every single time he muttered, shaking his head. He was about to honk when he heard it, the screech of tires, the roar of an engine pushed beyond its limits. Patrick looked up to see a white van careening around the corner, weaving erratically across both lanes. Time seemed to slow down, the way it does in moments of crisis. He could see the driver's head lolling, clearly unconscious or impaired. The van was heading straight for Vanessa's car, and she was still chatting away, completely unaware. Even if she noticed now, there was nowhere for her to go. The stone wall on one side, parked cars on the other. Patrick's mind calculated trajectories with frightening clarity. If the van hit her car straight on, the impact would crush her. If he positioned his SUV between them, the collision would still send her car spinning into the wall. There was only one option. Images flashed through his mind as he pressed the accelerator. His mother's face, Hannah's laugh from so long ago, the life he'd built in the city. Then everything narrowed to a single point of focus, the van's side panel as he aimed for it. The last thing he remembered was the screech of metal, the world turning upside down, and a single thought. At least she's safe. The hospital room materialized slowly, like a photograph developing in old darkroom chemicals. First came the sounds, the steady beep of monitors, the squeak of rubber-soled shoes in the hallway, the murmur of voices just outside his door. Then the smells. Antiseptic, floor cleaner, the artificial flowers someone had placed nearby. Finally, his vision cleared enough to make out the institutional ceiling tiles above him. Patrick tried to turn his head, but something held it immobile. A neck brace, he realized dimly. His thoughts felt fuzzy, disconnected, like trying to tune an old radio through static. Mr. Morgan? A nurse's face appeared above him. Can you hear me? Squeeze my hand if you can understand. He managed a weak squeeze, and her professional smile widened slightly. Good. Your wife is here. Would you like to see her? Vanessa appeared in his field of vision, perfectly put together as always. Her designer outfit seemed oddly out of place against the sterile hospital backdrop. There was something off about her expression, not concern exactly, more like... Irritation? The doctors say you'll live, she said, her tone clipped. But there's... there's damage to your spine. They're not sure. She trailed off, turning to look out the window. Over the next few days, as the pain medication decreased and his mind cleared, Patrick began to understand the full extent of his situation. The doctors spoke in carefully measured terms about partial paralysis and potential recovery. But their eyes told a different story. Late one night, drifting in and out of consciousness, he overheard a conversation outside his door that confirmed his worst fears. Mrs. Morgan, you need to understand. Your husband's paralysis may be permanent. He'll need extensive care, rehabilitation. And what about my life? Vanessa's voice, sharp with frustration. I didn't sign up to be a nursemaid. We had plans. A future. Many patients with similar injuries lead full, productive lives with proper support from family. You don't understand. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't what we planned. In the darkness of his room, 
Patrick laughed bitterly. No, this wasn't what they'd planned at all. Their life had been carefully mapped out. Expand the business. Maybe franchise it across the state. Buy that vacation home in the Hamptons Vanessa had been eyeing. Children had never been part of the plan. They'd interfere with their goals, Vanessa had said. As he lay there, memories he'd long suppressed began to surface. Hannah's face when he told her he was leaving Willow Creek. The hurt in his mother's eyes when he missed yet another Christmas. The way he'd gradually stopped calling, stopped visiting, too caught up in building his new life to nurture the old one. Karma's a witch, he whispered to the empty room. The days blurred together in a haze of physical therapy sessions, doctor's visits, and long stretches of silence. Vanessa's visits grew shorter and less frequent, always coinciding with doctor's rounds where she could get updates on his condition. She spoke constantly about the business, about how she was keeping things running, but never about their future together. Patrick found himself thinking more and more about Willow Creek, about the life he'd left behind. He remembered summer evenings by the creek with Hannah, the way she'd read him that story about the two frogs in the cream, one that gave up and drowned, the other that kept kicking until the cream turned to butter. We'll never give up, they'd promised each other back then. Young love's eternal vow, broken like so many others when ambition called. The day of Patrick's discharge dawned clear and crisp. Fall was settling over the city, painting the trees outside his hospital window in shades of gold and crimson. As the nurse helped him into the wheelchair, his new permanent accessory, he thought bitterly. He noticed Vanessa checking her watch repeatedly. The physical therapist wants to go over your home care instructions, the nurse said, pulling out a thick folder of paperwork. I've already arranged everything, Vanessa cut in, her tone dismissive. We really need to get going. I have a meeting this afternoon. Patrick said nothing as they wheeled him to the parking lot. He'd known this moment was coming since that overheard conversation, but the reality of it still felt like a punch to the gut. When Vanessa turned east instead of west toward their apartment, he merely closed his eyes. Let's not make this more difficult than it needs to be, Vanessa said after several miles of silence. We both know this is the most practical solution. Practical. Patrick repeated, tasting the bitterness of the word. That's always been your favorite word, hasn't it? Don't start, Patrick. What exactly did you expect? That I'd quit working to become your full-time nurse? That we'd somehow maintain our lifestyle with you? Like this? She gestured vaguely at his wheelchair. Like this, he echoed. You can't even say it, can you? Paralyzed, disabled, broken. You're being dramatic. Your mother can take care of you better than I could and I'll keep the business running. You'll still get your share of the profits. Patrick stared out the window, watching the city give way to farmland. Eleven years of marriage, reduced to a business transaction. But wasn't that what their whole relationship had been? They'd met at a networking event, dated because it made sense, married because it was the next logical step in their carefully planned lives. Remember our wedding vows? He asked suddenly. In sickness and in health? Vanessa's perfectly plucked eyebrows drew together. That's not fair, Patrick. Nobody expects those vows to cover this kind of situation. You mean nobody expects those vows to actually be tested? He laughed humorlessly. You know what's funny? I saved your life, and this is how you repay me. Her hands tightened on the steering wheel. I didn't ask you to play hero. You made that choice yourself. Yes, I did, just like you're making yours now. The familiar streets of Willow Creek appeared ahead, unchanged in the fifteen years since he'd left. The same weathered storefronts lined Main Street. The same ancient oak trees spread their branches over neat farmhouses. Even the air smelled the same, like fresh-cut grass and possibility. Vanessa stopped the car half a block from his mother's house. I'll help you into the wheelchair, but then I need to get back. I have that meeting. Don't bother, Patrick interrupted. You've done enough. Just leave the chair and go. She hesitated for a moment, perhaps expecting him to argue, to beg her to stay. When he remained silent, she nodded once, helped him awkwardly into the wheelchair, and drove away without a backward glance. The wheelchair moved awkwardly under Patrick's inexperienced control. Each crack in the sidewalk, every slight incline felt like a mountain to navigate. Sweat beaded on his forehead, despite the cool autumn air. 
By the time he reached his mother's gate, his arms were trembling from the effort. He paused, hearing voices from inside the house. His mother's familiar tones mixed with something unexpected. A young girl's laughter. Grandma, let me help with those dishes. Mom says you're supposed to be taking it easy. Oh, sweetheart, these few dishes won't hurt me. Your mother worries too much. Patrick frowned. His mother had no grandchildren. He was an only child, and he and Vanessa had never... The screen door creaked open, and a girl of about ten emerged onto the porch. She had long dark hair pulled back in a braid, and something about the way she stood, the tilt of her head. Their eyes met, and Patrick felt the world shift beneath him. He knew those eyes. He'd spent his teenage years getting lost in eyes exactly like those. Hannah's eyes. The girl disappeared inside, and moments later, his mother hurried out, her face a mixture of joy and concern at the sight of him. Oh, Patrick. My boy. She rushed down the steps, then stopped short, uncertain how to embrace him in the wheelchair. Hi, Mom, he managed. Surprise. Grace Morgan had aged in the years since he'd seen her last, silver threads now dominating her once dark hair, but her eyes were as sharp as ever as she studied his face. Behind her, the young girl, Lily, he heard his mother call her, watched from the doorway with undisguised curiosity. Once they were inside and Lily had been sent to the garden, Patrick turned to his mother. That girl? Is Hannah's daughter, Grace finished, her voice firm. She paused, then added softly, And yours. The words hit him like a physical blow. What? But how? Hannah was already pregnant when you left for the city. She made me promise not to tell you. Grace's hands twisted in her apron. Said you had your dreams, your plans. She wouldn't be the one to hold you back. Memories flooded back, each one now tinged with new meaning. Hannah, crying the night he told her he was leaving. Hannah, pushing him away when he tried to hold her. Hannah, saying, just go, Patrick, make something of yourself. He'd thought she was angry. Never once had he imagined. Does she know? Lily? No. Hannah wanted to wait until she was older, and then... Grace's voice hardened slightly. Well, you never came back, did you? The accusation in his mother's voice was gentle but unmistakable. All those Christmases missed, birthdays acknowledged only with checks and brief phone calls. He'd been too busy building his business, too caught up in Vanessa's ambitious plans. Where is Hannah now? Teaching at the elementary school. Same as always. She lives just down the road. Grace paused. She's never married. Turned down plenty of good men over the years. Before Patrick could process this information, the screen door slammed and Lily bounded back in. Grandma, Mom's home early. She's coming up the walk. Patrick's heart hammered in his chest as familiar footsteps sounded on the porch. The door opened and 15 years vanished in an instant. Hannah stood there frozen in the doorway and time seemed to stop. She looked exactly the same and completely different. The years had added subtle lines around her eyes a few strands of silver in her dark hair, but her smile was just as he remembered, until she saw him. Then it vanished, replaced by a shock so profound it seemed to steal her breath. Patrick? One word, his name, but it contained fifteen years of history, of secrets, of might-have-beens. The silence stretched between them, heavy with unspoken words. Hello, Hannah, he managed. It's been a while. Grace quietly ushered Lily into the kitchen leaving them alone with their shared past and uncertain future. Hannah moved into the room, her movements careful, controlled, the way she'd always been when trying to hide strong emotions. You're hurt, she said finally, her eyes taking in the wheelchair. Her voice was different, deeper, more mature, but still had that slight southern lilt he remembered. Long story, Patrick replied, not nearly as interesting as the stories I've been missing here. Hannah's face tightened. Patrick, she has your eyes, he said softly. How did I not see it the moment I looked at her? Hannah sank into the nearest chair, her composure cracking. I wanted to tell you, so many times I picked up the phone, but you were building your life in the city, and then I heard you'd married. You should have told me. His voice cracked. Hannah, she's my daughter. I had a right to know. 
Like you had a right to just leave? The words burst out of her. You didn't even look back, Patrick. You were so ready to escape this small-town life that you didn't see what was right in front of you. I was young, stupid. And I wasn't? Hannah's eyes flashed. I was 17, Patrick. 17 and pregnant and scared to death. But I stayed. I faced everyone's whispers, their judgment. I finished school, went to college, built a life for our daughter while you were off chasing your big dreams. Patrick absorbed the blow of her words, knowing he deserved every one. I'm sorry, he said simply. I know it's not enough, but I am so sorry, Hannah. She studied him for a long moment. Why are you here now, Patrick? Really? He told her then, about the accident, about Vanessa, about how his carefully constructed life had crumbled in an instant. Hannah listened without interruption, her expression softening slightly. So your wife just... left you here? Ex-wife soon enough, Patrick said. Turns out, in sickness and in health, had some fine print I missed. A ghost of a smile touched Hannah's lips. You always did need to read the fine print more carefully. The next few weeks settled into an unexpected rhythm. Hannah would bring Lily over in the mornings before school, and Patrick found himself living for these moments. His daughter was a whirlwind of energy and curiosity, reminding him so much of Hannah at that age it sometimes hurt to watch her. I heard you used to live here, Lily said one morning, helping him practice his wheelchair exercises in the garden. How come you left? Patrick's hands stilled on the wheels. I thought I needed something bigger than Willow Creek. Turned out what I really needed was right here all along. Mom says sometimes people have to leave to figure out where they belong, Lily observed, with the uncanny wisdom of children. Is that what happened to you? Your mom's a smart woman, Patrick replied, carefully avoiding a direct answer. Always has been. The physical therapy was grueling, but Patrick threw himself into it with determination he hadn't felt since the hospital. Having Lily there changed everything. Her encouragement, her excitement over every small victory, her absolute conviction that he would walk again. Remember when we were kids? Hannah said one afternoon, watching him struggle through his exercises. That story I read you about the two frogs and the cream? Patrick smiled through his pain. One gave up and drowned. The other kept kicking until the cream turned to butter. We made that pact after, to never give up no matter what. Hannah's eyes met his. You've got more fight in you than this, Patrick Morgan. I've seen it. Meanwhile, his business life was unraveling. Vanessa had started making changes without consulting him, pushing the company in directions he'd always avoided. She's taking too many risks, he told Jake, his assistant, during one of their daily calls those contracts she's signing. They're going to come back to bite us. What do you want me to do, boss? Patrick thought for a moment. Start putting together a buyout proposal. I think it's time for both of us to move on. The next morning, his lawyer called with news about the divorce. Vanessa was contesting the division of assets, claiming she'd built the business as much as he had. Let her have it, Patrick said, watching through the window as Lily helped Grace in the garden. Some things are worth more than money. Hannah found him on the porch that evening, staring at the sunset. Bad day? Actually, no, he realized. Maybe the best day I've had in years. I'm finally seeing things clearly. The morning everything changed started like any other. Patrick was on the porch, finishing his call with Jake about the business sale, when he heard Lily's familiar footsteps approaching. The papers are signed, he was saying. Vanessa gets her share, but the important thing is I'm free to focus on what really matters now, getting better and being there for my daughter. The sound of dropped school books made him turn. Lily stood at the gate, her face draining of color as his words registered. Your daughter? Her voice trembled, and in that moment she looked so much like Hannah it took his breath away. Lily, he began, but she was already running tears streaming down her face. He started to wheel after her but knew he couldn't keep up. Hannah arrived minutes later, breathless. She burst into my classroom in tears. What happened? She overheard me on the phone, Patrick explained, his voice heavy with regret. This isn't how I wanted her to find out. They found her at the creek, sitting on the fallen log where Patrick and Hannah had spent countless teenage afternoons. 
the same log where they'd made their promises, shared their dreams, where he'd first told Hannah he was leaving. Why didn't anyone tell me? Lily demanded as they approached. Was everyone just laughing at me behind my back? Poor Lily? Doesn't even know her own father's right here in town? No one was laughing, sweetheart, Hannah said softly. We were trying to protect you. Protect me? Lily's voice cracked. From what? From knowing my father didn't want me? That he left before I was even born? I didn't know about you, Patrick said quietly. If I had. You'd what? Lily challenged. You'd have stayed? Given up your big city dreams? Mom says you couldn't wait to leave Willow Creek behind. Your mother's right. Patrick wheeled closer to the log. I was young and stupid and thought I needed more than this town could offer. But you know what I learned? Sometimes the biggest dreams come true in the smallest places. Pretty words, Lily scoffed, but her voice wavered. Why should I believe anything you say? Because I'm done running, Patrick said simply. I spent 15 years chasing success, only to find out I had the wrong definition all along. Success isn't about money or business or fancy houses. It's about family. It's about love. And I've failed at both until now. He reached for her hand, half expecting her to pull away. I can't change the past, Lily. I can't go back and be there for your first steps or your first day of school. But I'm here now, and if you'll let me, I'd like to be your father going forward. No more secrets. No more running away. Lily studied him for a long moment and Patrick could see the battle playing out behind her eyes, wanting to believe him, but afraid to trust, wanting to embrace him, but scared of being hurt. Finally, she stepped forward and wrapped her arms around his neck. You have a lot of making up to do, she whispered. The rest of my life should be about enough time, he answered, holding her close. The autumn colors were painting Willow Creek in shades of gold and crimson, when Patrick took his first unassisted steps in the garden. He'd been working towards this moment for months, pushing through pain and frustration, driven by Lily's unwavering faith and Hannah's quiet strength. You're doing it! Lily squealed, hovering nearby with the wheelchair, just in case. Three steps, Dad! That's a new record! Dad! The word still sent a thrill through him every time she said it. It had taken weeks after their creekside conversation for her to use it, but when she finally did, it felt like coming home. Hannah watched from the porch, that same smile he'd fallen in love with at 17 playing on her lips. What did I tell you about Morgan's stubbornness? The divorce papers from Vanessa had arrived that morning. She'd signed them without comment, including a brief note about moving to California with her new partner. Patrick had felt nothing but relief. The man who'd left Willow Creek chasing bigger dreams seemed like a stranger now. Jake was running the business well, making monthly payments on their agreed schedule. But more importantly, he was running it the way Patrick had always wanted, with integrity and care for both employees and customers. Remember when you first came back? Grace asked that evening as they sat around the fire pit in the backyard. You thought your life was over. Instead, it was just beginning, Patrick replied, watching Lily attempt to roast the perfect marshmallow while Hannah offered expert advice. Later, after Lily had gone to bed, Hannah joined him on the porch swing. The night air was crisp with approaching winter, but neither of them felt the cold. I got offered a promotion today, she said quietly. Vice principal, Hannah, that's wonderful. It would mean more hours, more responsibility. And you'd be amazing at it, Patrick finished, just like you're amazing at everything else. She turned to face him, moonlight silvering her dark hair. What about you? Any regrets about selling the business? Only that I didn't do it sooner. He reached for her hand, feeling the same spark he'd felt at 17. Everything I ever needed was right here. I just had to lose everything else to see it. We've got a lot of lost time to make up for, Hannah mused. Then I guess it's a good thing we've got the rest of our lives, Patrick replied, pulling her closer. The next spring they married in Grace's garden. Patrick walked Hannah down the aisle with only a slight limp, Lily beaming beside them as bridesmaid. The whole town turned out to celebrate. Not just a wedding, but a homecoming. A healing. A family finally made whole. Life wasn't perfect. Patrick still had days when his legs wouldn't cooperate, when the pain made him short-tempered. 
but he had Hannah's strength to lean on, Lily's laughter to lift his spirits, and Grace's quiet wisdom to guide him. Sometimes the best journeys, he learned, take you right back where you started, but with eyes finally open to see the treasure that was there all along. And sometimes it takes losing everything you thought you wanted to find everything you really need. As he sat on the porch that evening, watching Hannah and Lily in the garden, he remembered that old story about the two frogs. He'd been like both of them, the one who gave up and the one who kept fighting. But love, he discovered, was the butter that rose from all that kicking, strong enough to hold you up, sweet enough to make the struggle worthwhile. 